What's up YouTube? Today I will be doing a deck profile of... Guess what it is in the comments section! I don't really know what it is, um, to be honest. Um, I guess the most basic thing that you could call it would be, um, synchrocentric. Um, just because it's not really plants since it only runs three monster or three plant type monsters. Um, I suppose if you really wanted to be uh, queer, you could run more. Anyway, I figure we will get into the deck profile. Uh, I'm trying to do as many deck profiles as I can on everything just because this format thus far has been kind of uh, fucked for me just because, well, I haven't really been doing as well as I usually do. Um, haven't really decided on a deck. I've tried out six samurai just because that is like the one true deck that I started out playing. Tried wind ups just because I thought I could play them. Um, I think I, I, I mean, that's the main deck I've been playing. Um, and the evils I showed you earlier. I tried those out a little. Agents. And then this has been one of my favorite decks. It's more of like a fun deck to play. I don't really think it's powerful enough to do much this format. It will claim some top 32 spots though. So I figure, why the hell not? Let's get into a deck profile. Um, yeah, look at that. Um, I did do this deck, a uh, similar deck, um, pretty much the same. I don't know if anything really changed on uh, Death Synodet's channel. Um, maybe I'll put them in the description. If not, it's Death Synodet. Um, uh, just guess on the whole Synodet part. Uh, I think it's like S Y N A D A T E. Um, if you're close enough, who really cares? Um, anyway, let's get into the deck profile. We've got the double bridge, the double DDs. Um, yeah, those are some big boobies on this guy. Uh, Debris Dragon. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh God. Um, he brings back something with less than 500 attack. Um, if you have any intelligence at all, you bring back Dandelion. Um, Dandelion is good. I really like Dandelion. Like, just this card is hilarious um, for me. I don't know why. Like, this is like my card. Um, he is my dude. I would like fucking go set this guy um, just because I want to get him on the field or something. Or I will like literally normal summon him and swing just so Dandelion did some damage that game. Um, Dandelion is by far one of my favorite cards in the game right now. I don't know why. Like, there's just this thing about this card that makes me love it. Um, I will lone fire for him even if I have no reason to. I will just play poorly to get him on the field. Um, if you have an ultra rare one, you should definitely send me a message because then I will, like, slide this guy into my calculator and I'll play your ultra rare one and you can, like, sign it and then send it to me because then I'll have people's signatures on my card and I'll feel like hot shit. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's like the only reason I want the Ultra Rare though. I just want to feel cool. Um, so anyway, for the rest of the plant engine, we've got Spore because it came off the ban list at 1. If it had come off at 2, I would play 2 because he's like, like just this whole plant thing is just like absolutely ridiculous. Look at these two guys. Like these are the two like most gay looking cards ever. But I fucking love them. I don't even care. Um, and then Lone Fire Blossom is like the ugly uncle to these guys. Like. They're like, no, don't rape me or anything like that. Um, anyway, sidetracking. I don't really think, I don't know, I just really like this deck, I guess. Um, that I want to make a backstory up for it. So, like, uncle, and then, like, we got double Ds. Like, even though this is probably, like, a dude dragon, I'm going to say it's a girl dragon. I don't even know if you can see the debris dragon, yeah. So, five-card plant engine. Um, I'm pretty sure last format it was a five-card plant engine, so this is pretty much the same. Anyway, you got those. You got your double reborn Tengu because it's at two. Um, I haven't really seen any inconsistencies with it. Exceeding with it is kind of dumb unless you're on your last copy just because you don't get another one and then you waste dead drawing it. Um, although it really combos off with some of your cards well um, that I'll get into later. So we'll keep this guy to the side because he does some combos. Um, you got Double Snowman Eater because I hear it's an okay card, and plus that plus Debris Dragon makes Gunganeer. And with this deck, you just gain so much advantage so quickly um, if you play it right that it's ridiculous, um, especially with some cards I'll get into later, that you really don't mind uh, wasting some cards on Gunganeer just to pop some back row and whatnot. 
So yeah, Double Snowman Eater, he's also a really good first turn set. We've got a one card trooper, um, because he pr should probably be a second Cyber Valley, but I don't have two. Um, yeah, um, I've actually had times where the one card trooper has come in handy, just for like, milling for Black Luster Soldier or whatnot, and also bringing it back with Call of the Haunted is pretty good, which I run. Cyber Valley, this is guy is how you gain your advantage. Um, if you haven't seen the Valley builds, they're pretty good, but honestly, three is excess. I'm gonna run probably two, um, just for gaining quick advantage. And then you can also normal summon him, and since Insectors aren't a thing, well, I shouldn't say they're not a thing, they're just not a powerful thing anymore. The normal summon of Cyber Valley is incredibly good right now. Um, and also bringing it back with Levier is pretty good. Next we've got the Tour Guide Engine. Um, you do make some rank 3's. Sang in with Call of the Haunted is pretty good. Oh, shit. I forgot to mention. Um, Cyber Valley plus Reborn Tengu is pretty good I hear. Um, so yeah, that's another reason uh, for Cyber Valley. You've got a Tengu on the field, you summon Cyber Valley, you remove them both, and then you draw two, and then you get your next Reborn Tengu. Um, you just don't want to draw it, because that would be bad. Anyway, back to Tour Guide Engine. It's splashable in anything right now, except um, Mother Frack and Gear Gia's, um, or Gear Gia, or whatever. I don't know why people aren't running that, even in this, or even in that, just because like a Sangin searches for your armor, I think. I don't even know what the stats on that guy are. Plus, Zen Mains is just really powerful right now. Next, we've got Double Thunder King. Um, Thunder King is still frackin' awesome. Um, I love when people go duality and then I just go, Call the Haunted, Thunder King, suck a dick, I don't care, Thunder King, go! So, yeah, that's why you run Double Thunder King. You got a Caius, um, because this deck has trouble winning. Um, like, I don't know how to describe this. Like, you could have eight cards in hand, but they could all be, like, small-ass cards. Or Lone Fire Blossom. Like, nothing you can combo with. And you might have Dandy Tokens chilling on the field or something. You just tribute it off, go Caius, remove that Sangin from play, or remove that back row from play, and finish them off with a Caius. Um, in my opinion, as a one-of, he's pretty powerful right now. Um, not as many darks running around on the format, but honestly, removal of any kind is pretty good. Uh, so next we've got Black Luster Soldier, because you run a plethora of lights and darks. Um, I guess I will go over how many exactly in a moment. Um, I'll sort through it and whatnot, but yeah, he's almost never, almost always live, unless you pot of Avarice, in which case he becomes like a dead card, but... I mean, if you've got pot of Avarice, then you have the pluses where it doesn't matter. Next we've got a Gores, because... Gores is a good hand trap to go with these double max C and effect veiler. Um, I just run these four hand traps. Maybe you could swap out a Gores for an effect veiler or, I don't know, a max C for an effect veiler. Right now, I'm pretty satisfied with this whole lineup. Um, I don't know, I'm just a really big fan of max C right now. Um, it helps you gain even more advantage than this deck already gains. Like, I, I can't even understate how much advantage this deck can gain in one turn. Um, just so many good combos, and the fact that you can go and do Shooting Star Dragon with a three card combo that you can search for is pretty good. I will show you that in a sec. Anyway, we've got the Soldier Boy right here, um, and then Lights and Darks, we've got Effect Veiler, Gores, Caius, Thunder Kings, we've got the Saiyan, the Tour Guides, that. Cyber Valley's gonna be removed from play most of the time, so that won't matter. And then you've got your extra deck. Um, so that doesn't look like a lot of lights and darks, but the extra deck is kind of what compensates for that. Um, plus, like, you'll always draw into tour guides, search out a saying in, uh, and then you can use that to get effect veilers and whatnot. Plus, you've got formula synchron and other stuff in the extra deck, which I will show you. Um, so, yeah, Blacklister Soldier is almost always a good card, um, particularly in this deck. So now, onto the spells. We've got one for one. Um, I've kind of been wishy-washy on this card, uh, but when you've got Cyber Valley as a target, Effect Veiler, um, I think I'm actually kind of limited on targets. Yeah, I only run three targets for one for one, which is kind of why I'm on the fence about this card. Um, if I start running the second Cyber Valley, then I'll probably definitely keep one for one if I swap out a Maxi for another Effect Veiler. One for one becomes a much better card. Um, but beyond that, you know, one for one does what it did last time. It was a relevant card. Um, 
Not much more to say. We've got the goats. Um, I love scapegoat, like right now. Like honestly, like I will lick this card right now and just put it back. I licked it. Um, it's wet right there because I don't know. Like I honestly don't know what to say. Um, we've got Pot of Everest because that's a good card. Um, like now I'm kind of like emotionally upset. I I want to thank you guys for going on this uh, emotional roller coaster with me. And well, I'm not really sure how the rest of this deck profile is gonna go. And I'm not sure why I'm interrupting it at enemy controller, but why the hell not? Um, so anyway, we got enemy controller and mind control. Honestly, mind control is really underwhelming to me. Enemy controller is beefcake, though. Um, yeah, uh, enemy controller is good. Mind controller is not bad, I guess. I kind of want to put in a foolish burial for this because I'm not running that card. Um, but yeah, if I take out the card trooper, I'll probably cut this for a foolish burial. Um, there's a lot of changes I don't know what to do. That's why you guys have to leave some comments. Uh, tell me what I need to change. Anyway, those are the those are the combo with your opponents with monsters cards. We've also got a soul taker for getting rid of uh, shit. I want to kind of swap that out for a smashing ground though. Um, giving my opponents life points is less than ideal. Monster reborn, dark hole, and heavy storm. Um, the trifecta I always talk about and double space. This is just like so basic. I don't even want to have to go over this. Three is just like excess in my opinion. On to traps, we've got the solemn guys. Um, yeah, the guys with the white beards that do shit. Um, prevention cards. We've got double torrential. Um, again, like good. I don't run bottomless in this deck just because I feel like I didn't need it when I'm running double D prison and double near force for more removal. I mean, D prison already can shut down dragons. They've just lost so much consistency that if they lose out to a D prison, it's like. Haha, uh, not a not a boo boo. Um, not really sure how else to describe that. And then double mirror force also s can slow them down. With only red one uh, red MD, uh, the fact that light pulsar only has like one viable target, dark flare is not as threatening. That's why I run the mirror forces. And lastly, we've got call of the haunted because fun cards to bring back with call of the haunted include Sangan. Just for uh, if they target it with the space typhoon, you go bring back Sangan, get a free search. Bring back Thunder King during their uh, duality plays and stuff. Sh stop that. Card Trooper gives you a plus one. And Dandelion's fun for token generation. And then also you can kind of bring back like your Spore, your level one guys. Spore and Effect Veiler just for um, making synchro plays after they attack over Dandelion if you've got one of those two in the grave. Um, and then obviously bringing back your, your big guys is helpful with Call of the Haunted. Um, I've also had times where I like milled a Tengu with a uh, card trooper and then they targeted Call of the Haunted for with an MST or whatever and I brought back Tengu, got another Tengu. It was actually a really interesting play. Uh, so you've got a lot of options with Call of the Haunted which is why I chose to run it. Um, so moving on to the extra deck, you've got Formula Synchron. I love this guy too, almost as much as I love Dandelion, but slightly less. Um, we've got TG Hyper Librarian. Picked one of these guys up for cheap because they're getting reprinted. Um, yeah, that was one of my worse or worser invest investment decisions. Yeah, why not? Ally Justice Cataster because it's good, I hear. And a Gaia Knight, which should be an Orion Dragon. Um, yeah, I'm kind of sad that's not an Orion Dragon. Next, we've got Gunganir because, man, I just love making this guy. He's 2,500, and you just go. The only way you really make him is with the snowman eaters, and then you also make and then the two debris dragon or 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 a spore, because obviously your spore goes up to level four when you remove from play dandelion or you remove from play lone fire, so you can do some plays with that. Um, unless you just like I've got some other plays that I'll show you later for making shooting star dragon, but yeah, Gunganair, good card. Black Rose, obvious, um, just because you have one card nuke with Debris Dragon. You just go Debris Dragon, bring back Dandelion, make Black Rose, get your two tokens after you nuke the field. That's pretty good. Scrap Dragon, um, this card is absolutely ridiculous in this deck. If you have a Dandelion token on the field, you go Summon Debris Dragon. Alright, so you've got a token. We'll just say this is a token. 
And you go summon uh, Debris Dragon, bring back Dandelion, sync with all of these, um, bring out Scrap Dragon, get your two more Dandy tokens back, and then you just go pop, pop their back row or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's pretty nice. So that is why you run Scrap Dragon. He's actually really, really good in this deck. Um, Stardust, another option for synchroing into level 8, but really the only time I synchro into Stardust for level 8 is if I'm afraid of Mirror Force or I have a Formula Synchron on the field just because shooting Star Dragon's pretty good, I hear. It's not like he's a 3300 beefcake with the ability to negate a destruction effect once per turn. So those are the Synchros. I run nine of them. Um, no Armory Arm because, um, well, I, no, I don't really know why not. Um, I just chose not to run an Armory Arm. Uh, and no Ancient Fairy Dragon because, well, I run Gunganair instead. Alright, so on to the Exceeds. We've got Levier. Um, bring back your, uh, your, what's it called, the Machine Guy. Um, you bring back the Machine Guy, uh, Cyber Valley, or you bring back what Cyber Valley removed. Uh, Leviathan Dragon. Uh, Zen Mains is just so powerful right now. Uh, Giga Brilliant. Yeah, Gigabyte, I don't really know. Um, he's just a fuel BLS, I guess. Um, Temtempo for getting rid of other people's Zen mains, and a Utopia for, um, yeah, for mind control and enemy controller. So here's the three card combo I said I'd show you for getting a instant shooting star dragon. Um, and you need these two cards. Oh god. Um, well, my one for one is kind of wet because I licked the scapegoats. Um, so yeah, anyway, you got these three cards in hand. Now you might be going, Zach, that's so unlikely because you talk like that. But with saying again, you can search out Danny Lion, you can search out Debris Dragon. So really, all you need to do is open two of these and like a tour guide or a saying in, and you can get to it. Anyway, so what you're going to do, and I'm going to get my Pokemon tokens out because I, I don't play to Pokemon, but why not? Um, so anyway, we've got the tokens. So what you're going to do is you're going to have these three cards in hand. You're going to do the obvious one-for-one one dandy play. You're going to get these two. You're going to get a spore from your deck. Your deck. Or you're going to get it from your hand if you suck. Um, so you're going to sync with those. You're going to make Formula Synchron, which is right her. Yeah, you got Formula Synchron. Next, you're going to normal summon your, your Debris Dragon. You're going to bring back your Dandelion. Um, and then you're going to sync for eight. Make your Star Tar Dragon. You're going to get two more Dandelion tokens. Because you're a pro player. Um, next, you're going to sync with Formula Synchron. And no, no, you're not. Why did I say that? You're going to remove from play Dandelion. Get your Spore. Spore is level 4, of course. You're going to sync with the token in that and go into TG Hyper Librarian. Next, you're going to sync with your Stardust and your Formula Synchron to make Shooting Star. Triggers TG Hyper Librarian's effect. You draw one, and now you have this kind of broke ass field with the three card combo. Um, that is pretty good. And then obviously, there are other ways. I have had times when I had just like a Formula Synchron on the field and like a Tengu in hand, and I normal summon Tengu, enemy controller their Thunder King or whatever, and then made Stardust synced into Shooting Star. Uh, there's just so many ways, and then had a, a Tengu on the field too, obviously. So I mean, there's just so many good combos that this deck does with your opponent's cards that, I don't know, it's really fun to mess with them, like when you take their level 4s and whatnot. Um, so anyway, thank you for listening to the whole ramble, if you did. If not, I want to tell you that, well, thanks regardless for just looking at this video. I want you to rate, comment, and subscribe below if you're still going to listen to me. Um, anyway, YouTube, it's been a more interesting deck profile, I guess. And so I will see you um, during the next deck profile.